Good morning, and welcome to Christ Lutheran Church, Roanoke, Virginia, on this fourth Sunday of Easter, May 3rd, 2020. We invite you to join with us for worship today. On our website, ChristLutheranRoanoke.org, you'll find an order for the service for this worship experience. Please download that and join us in singing and responses. Other announcements are at our website. Prayer list is always updated on a daily basis. If you have prayer requests, you can send them to us via email or on Facebook. Please join us now as we watch and listen to our director of music and organist, Nancy Delaney.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side and on this day you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now for our young people in the congregation, we invite you all to pay attention to this video about the Good Shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Beside still water, He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for His name's sake. Even though I darkest valley I fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You are with. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me All the days of my life And I will dwell in the house of the Lord My whole life long Even though I hope you enjoyed that. And now, a um, member of our church, via video, will be sharing with us the first reading from the book of Acts, the second chapter. A reading from Acts 2. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. 
day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. The sheep follow him because they know his voice. If only it were that easy, right? Sarah Henrik, one of my former seminary professors, writes about a sermon she once heard on a Good Shepherd Sunday many years ago. In one of those sermons that bring the biblical world down to earth, the preacher talked about his life in Africa. He told us how the people of a village knew each other's sheep the way we might know one another's children. As he sat in a group in the village, a person would stop by have you seen my sheep so-and-so, identifying his own sheep by name? Through the dark night, he heard villagers calling out names. They are calling their sheep, one of the locals told him. They will all find each other. This feature of village life in a place small enough and close enough where folks know each, which sheep are theirs and which belong to someone else, where sheep themselves know to whom they belong, was as familiar to Jesus as it is unfamiliar to us. In this portion of John 10, as Jesus tries to describe the connection between himself and his followers, he uses images that don't touch our hearts and minds as richly as they would have touched his original hearers. If only it were that easy. I find myself thinking and praying as I read and study this passage. If only Jesus' voice was so easy to pick out among all the other voices that vie for our attention. We read the Bible and we hear the news. We scroll through social media and we talk with our family and friends. We try to listen to our own hearts and we pray for guidance, but it never really seems as clear as it does for those sheep and their shepherd, does it? We need to stay at home. We need to reopen the economy. We need to follow the directives of our government, but which ones? We need to heed the advice of the experts, but which ones? They aren't all telling us the same thing. If only it were as easy for us as it is for the shepherds and their sheep. Henrik continues, that we continue to be divided about who cares best for us, that we continue to live with the anxiety of wondering who seeks to diminish us in any respect ought not surprise us. Division and a struggle to understand are the result and the motivation for Jesus' words here. We struggle for clear speech and we yearn but hardly ever dare to trust our leaders. One lesson here is that sheep fare best together. We fare best together. In her early days as bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, Bishop Elizabeth Eaton introduced four emphases in um, understanding who we are. We are church, we are Lutheran, 
We are church together, and we are church for the sake of the world. From the ELCA website, by God's grace, we can and do live confidently and generously in this community of faith and in service to others amid the mysteries and paradoxes of this life in Christ, including our human limitations and failings and the ambiguities, uncertainties, and suffering that we experience. Jesus is our peace and has broken down the walls that divide us, walls of judgment, hatred, condemnation, and violence, and has made us into one new human community. As church together, we faithfully strive to participate in God's reconciling work, which prioritizes disenfranchised, vulnerable, and displaced people in our communities and the world. God's generosity flows through us into the life of the world. The very earliest church seemed to get this. After Jesus' resurrection, after his ascension, after the coming of the Holy Spirit, the followers of Jesus devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. We heard this in our reading from Acts. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, they spent much time together in the temple. They broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Such a beautiful image of the church, isn't it? If only it were that easy. We long for a world in which all are fed, a world in which all people come together as one, a world in which God is praised in word and deed, but we know we fall short. It's hard to know which voices to listen to. Statistics don't lie. The novel coronavirus does not discriminate, and yet the elderly, the poor, those without health insurance are indeed more likely to succumb to this disease. If we have ever wondered if Christ was calling us to follow him, now is the time. If we have ever wondered if Jesus was calling us to live like him, now is the time. If we have ever wondered whether we could really put the needs of others first as Christ did, now is the time. If ever there was a time that we need one another, that time is now. Like our ancestors in the faith, we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Like our fellow disciples in the early church, we are called to pray and worship and share with one another. Like our fellow Lutherans around the globe, we are called to be church for the sake of the world. Oh, My friends in Christ, I miss you. I miss you in ways that this introvert never would have guessed. We need one another. But I, for one, am so amazingly grateful for the ways that we have found to be community, even when we can't be together physically. You are the church, as you have always been, caring for one another, checking on those who are alone, making meals for those in need, finding new ways to meet, mailing and emailing, and finding all kinds of virtual ways to send messages of hope and love and comfort. Like the very first Christians, you are being church in ways none of us could have imagined even a few months ago. Thank you. Thank you for listening for the voice of Jesus amid all the other noises that seek our attention. Thank you for caring for the least of these, even when it's easier just to care for your own. Thank you for being the body of Christ in a world that values wealth and power, even when we know love and peace are the real gifts and power of God. This is my favorite prayer book, and I know I've shared it with you many times before, Walter Rugemann's Odd to Heaven, Rooted to Earth. I'm going to close with a prayer today entitled, Move Us Beyond Ourselves. It's written for an ordination of one of his students many years ago, and so I've edited it just a bit for us today in this time, in this place. Let us pray. 
Holy God, who calls the worlds into being, who calls us into Christ's church, we thank you for the church that is our true home, for the mission of the church that is our true joy, and for the ministry of the church that is our proper task. We thank you for the ministry of the church in this place, for pastors and people who over time have named your name and lived your life. We thank you for the ministry of the church, for its steadfastness over time, for its faithful witness in the struggle for justice and peace, for its durable walk in caring ways. We thank you for the many ways of ministry that are faithfully practiced in praise of you out beyond our range of acceptance for those more radical than us, for those more cautious than us, for those in traditions strange to us, for faith families who care in ways other than our own. We pray this day for all those who stand in need of ministry, for the sick and the dying, for the powerful who are bewildered, for the poor who lack so much we take for granted, for the brutalized who wait for relief. We pray your mighty spirit upon us that we may more fully engage our baptism, that we may accept the costs that belong to our life with you, that we may embrace the joys that only you can give. Move us beyond ourselves, our favorite cliches, our tired resentments, our worn habits, to your newness. Make us light. Make us ready, make us open, that we may become a resounding doxology through your passion and into your victory. We pray in the name of the crucified and risen Jesus, the Lord of the church. Amen. We continue with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all 
who are in need. Shepherding God, we thank you for the educational ministries of our church, enrich the work of teachers, professors, mentors, advisors, and faculty at colleges, seminaries, and learning sites. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guiding God, no one should be in want, but the nations to return to your paths of righteousness to inspire our leaders to walk in your ways so that all may have the opportunity to live abundantly and sustainably. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, you carry us tenderly. We pray for those who walk through dark valleys overshadowed by anxiety and overwhelmed with suffering. We especially lift up those in the front line of all medical professions, caring for those who are gravely ill. Lord, bring hope and healing to all. Bring safety and peace to all. We give thanks, Lord, for those involved in the front line of dealing with all this, from the first responders to government officials to health people. Lord, we give you thanks for grocery workers and all those who maintain the supply chains for needed ingredients for us to live our lives. We give you thanks for feeding ministries and homeless outreach, for online counselors and, and all providing care in these trying times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Nurturing God, you desire justice for the hungry. Bless advocacy work, food pantries everywhere. May none of our neighbors lack for basic needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Everlasting God, your beloved have heard your voice, and you have called them by name and guided them to your side in death. We thank you for the lives of faithful witnesses. We give you thanks, Lord, for the family dealing with the loss, the families of Ralph and Lincoln, of Mike and Fred, of Barbara and Linda. We give you thanks, Lord, for new life in baby Willow, Pastor Cindy's great niece. We ask for your healing spirit upon Sharon and Anita, Karen and Greg, Tanner and Rose, Lou, Jean, and Laura. We ask for your peace with Isaac and McKenna and all in need of your presence. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this point in our worship, we would normally share the peace of Christ with one another and offer up financial gifts. We offer you the opportunity from your home to send peace and support to others. Take a few moments with all that are gathered with you or by yourself to pray for those that God's peace is needed. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Oh. 
How could she little flock? How could she little flock? For the father to keep you his love forever. How could she little flock? Praise the Lord, I above. Praise the Lord, I above. For he stoops down to heal you, uplift and restore you. Praise the Lord, I Thankful hearts raised to God, thankful hearts raised to God, for he cares what's beside you, in all things works with you. Thankful hearts raised to God. Each week throughout this season of Easter, we are posing a, a question of the week and inviting you to send in your responses in words and pictures, and we will share them uh, at our Wednesday evening prayer service. And so our question of the week this week is, how have you experienced the grace and love of the risen Christ through others, through community? Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.